So we hear over and over again, uh, especially from establishment Democrats, that in order to win, we have to be more centrist. I mean, centrism is the right way to go. It's not just about winning, of course, but we just have to appeal to the middle because that's the best way to go. We have to be centrist, pragmatist. Uh, we can never be too far to the left. No, no, no. We have to appeal to the middle. We have to do compromise. We always have to compromise with the Republicans. And we, we got to make sure to not be too far left. I mean, look at the far right. I, they're in power. They'll say it's because, well, it's because of the Bernie bros. They didn't support the centrist, pragmatist Hillary Clinton. And it's all their fault that we have Donald Trump. Bernie's too far left. And that's why we have Trump. Everybody should have came to the center. Everybody should have came to the center. Now, that, of course, is ridiculous, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, but first, look, there's this idea, right, that the people who believe in the policies espoused by Bernie Sanders are too far to the left. Now, polling, of course, disagrees with that. Um, but the centrists believe that we need moderate, sensible policies that are, um, you know, going to obviously appeal to a broader swath in the middle. As I said, everybody's in the middle can't go too far right, can't go too far left, right? Now, it turns out that uh, this idea actually does more harm to the country. And it's actually, uh, they are actually the one, the centrists, that enable people like Donald Trump, people like the insane right wing. According to research from David Adler, uh, who wrote in the New York Times, shows that... Uh, that across Europe and North America, centrists, who are supposed to be the pragmatist defenders of democracy, uh, and, and the people that are in the middle with the rest of the country, are actually more, the least supportive of democracy, the least committed to democratic institutions, and the most supportive to authoritarianism. Wow. Now look, that sounds crazy, right? I mean... The narrative is that the centrists are the most rational. That's where you're going to find, of course, the most stability. We can't, again, can't go too far right, can't go too far left. We got to stay right in the middle. Well, here's the problem. When you have, as we do, a right wing that continues to go further and further right to the point of where they're extreme authoritarian, right? And you have a left that rushes to catch up to it in the name of bipartisanship, well, the center ends up being massively to the right, and also it enables the worst kind of people. For example, uh, Richard Spencer, right? We have a centrist movement that's like, well, look, guys, Antifa, we need to hear out Richard Spencer. We need to hear out these, uh, we need to hear out Ben Shapiro. Oh, these guys, they're just, they just have a, a different point of view. They're not bad people. Look, I don't think, I, I, did, I massively disagree with Ben Shapiro, but I don't think he's a terrible, terrible person. He's got terrible views. But Richard Spencer is a fucking Nazi. There is no reason to listen to him. He has zero good ideas. And then you have people that are racist. David Duke, right? You, the former head of the Ku Klux Klan, a grand wizard or something like that. And what? The centrists are like, don't be too mean to him, okay? We need to give him... We need to allow him to, to say his piece. He's a fucking racist. What, what's wrong with you? No, we're going to let these people drive discourse? David Duke should never have been on television. Nobody should have let him on to have an interview. That kind of, that kind of discourse is not necessary. But again, you have this centrist movement and, and, and this media that tries so hard to, to try to be objective, right? Got to be objective. Well, they, yes, you do have to be objective in the media. The problem is, is that they mistake objectivism for neutrality. So instead it's, oh, got to be neutral. Got to give David Duke his time on television. We got to make sure to protect Richard Spencer on these uh, campuses. And look at these protesters going after Richard Spencer. Oh my God, terrible. But the ideas espoused by Richard Spencer are also terrible. Now that said, I think it. I think they should uh, be allowed to speak on campuses to like four people, because that's all who's going to listen to them. So I think it's more up to us to put a, uh, a you know 
to ignore them and to not let their ideas get mainstream. But anyway, so look, <laughs> that's how ridiculous our politics have become. Okay. Uh, here, you know, look, us people are on the supposed far left, progressives, right? We're actually the most pragmatic and practical ones. And we have no time for Nazis, right? And look, the reason that we're the most pragmatic and practical is because we actually look at the data, right? We look at the data and we look at policy like Medicare for all, single payer, and we look at free college, we look at the impacts of minimum wages and, and the living wage uh, on different areas, and, and we come to the conclusion that these policies actually do fucking work. They work. They work. And look, they've worked in other countries uh, that have less GDP, um, that are not as wealthy as we are, and yet somehow they have lower prices and they have better outcomes. And yet, for some reason, we can't do it here. Oh, but it's not practical. It's not pragmatic. We need to come to the center and work on a plan with Republicans in order to do health care. Fuck that. Fuck that. That is absolute bullshit. That's not going to work. Those policies actually work. Medicare for all. Progressive policies. And they're actually incredibly popular. But the centrist narrative is... That will never, ever work. Hillary Clinton during the election called herself a pragmatist. Medicare for all will never, ever come to pass. Those words should be burned in everybody's brain. Will never, ever come to pass. This is your pragmatist? No, no. She's an enabler of the right. And let me get into more numbers uh, in case you're not buying this, right? Now, respondents, according to this study, who put themselves at the center of the political spectrum, are the least supportive of democracy, according to several different survey measures. These include views as democracy as the best political system and a more general rating of democratic small d pol uh, politics. All right. Now, in both, those in the center have the most critical views of democracy. In fact, only 33% of, of centrists think democracy, when asked, is a very good system. Think about that. That is a third of centrists that are like, oh, democracy, very good system. I love democracy. Now, in case you're thinking, oh, come on. Really? Okay, look, uh, let's talk about elections, right? Elections are very, very important. That's the core of democracy. Having elections, right? Well, if you think if you don't think democracy is a good system, then you know odds are you will not be in favor of free and fair elections, right? Well, it turns out we're the centrists. Centrists are least likely to support free and fair elections. In the case of the United States, fewer than half of people in the political center view elections as essential, free and fair elections. Well, that, I guess that explains how they can rig a primary or attempt to rig primaries against progressives because they don't care about free and fair elections. No, no, it's our person's got to win. Hmm. Now, centrists are also least likely to support liberal institutions. Now, look, we hear about all the time from the centrists and people supposedly in the middle, from the Democratic establishment especially, that, oh, you Bernie bros, you have no people of color in your group. You guys are so racist and so white. I mean, you don't care about feminism or you don't care about civil rights at all. No, you're just a bunch of white college bros that want free stuff. Really? Well, okay, well, let's ask the centrists about civil rights. In the United States, only 25% of centrists agree that civil rights are an essential feature of democracy. So... Only about a quarter of them say that it is essential, whereas progressives, it's absolutely essential, and the progressive movement is dominated by people of color. Oh, but what about Bernie Sanders? What about Nina Turner? Nina Turner's the head of our revolution. Oh, but you forget, a couple of days ago, she was called a white bread Bernie bro. That is a, that is a progressive woman of color, and you're calling her a white bread Bernie bro? 
or a Nina, bro? You've got to be fucking kidding me. The centrists, I can't stand them. I can't stand them. Now, most damning here from the lack of civil rights. And, and look, uh, to go back to that for a second. Um, Hillary Clinton, right? She had indentured servants working at her uh, at, at at the governor's uh, mansion in Arkansas. These are prison inmates, right? So I call them indentured servants because they're essentially getting paid nothing because they're in jail. And they're, of course, majority African-American. Well, yeah, but they wanted to be there. And we treated them good. That's essentially slave labor. She's fine with that. And, of course, well, we have to bring these people to heal. There's your, there's your centrism, right? Now, again, the most damning thing here is not that. It's actually their support of authoritarianism. Turns out, centrists are actually the most supportive of authoritarianism. Now, of course, there is one caveat to that. As long as it's not right-wing authoritarianism, if it is centrist authoritarianism, then they absolutely fucking love it. They found evidence of substantial support for a strong leader who ignores his country's legislature, particularly among centrists. In the United States, centrist support for a strongman type leader far surpasses that of both the right and the left. Now, that's amazing because, again, the right loves authoritarians. I, look at who they have. Donald Trump. He's the king fucking monkey. And every Republican bows down to kiss his ring. And yet here are the centrists that rail on Trump for his authoritarianism. Think authoritarianism is actually fucking awesome. Wow. Wow. Now the left, of course, is the lowest. Because the left, of course, progressive, we don't believe in authoritarianism. We believe in cooperation, getting together and governing. We actually believe in democracy. Now, nonetheless, here you have the centrists love authoritarianism. You've got the right wing that also loves authoritarianism. Um, just as long as it's not right wing, because we got to stay true to our respective parties, right? With our teams. So basically, as long as somebody like Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg right is the authoritarian centrists are like yay we love our centrist authoritarian rule <laughs> but finally i want to read this because uh, i think it gives pretty good context into what this and what the findings actually say they write across europe and north america support for democracy is in decline well that is of course i think linked to the decline of capitalism capitalism is not serving the people. It's actually serving the corporations and making the rich richer. People are very, very angry about that. And that leads an economic stagnation, of course, leads to situations where people are more accepting of an authoritarian ruler who's actually going to, quote, fix things or drain the swamp. Now, they said to explain this trend, conventional wisdom points to political extremes. Both the far left and far right are, according to this view, willing to ride roughshod over democratic institutions to receive ra to achieve radical change. Now, if you look at Bernie Sanders' movement, what's the political revolution about? It's about using the function and form of democracy, i.e. elections, to install progressives that will vote in radical change. That is the exact opposite of what they're saying here. That the left, in this case, is willing to ride roughshod over democratic institutions. That is not true at all. Bernie Sanders wants to use those democratic institutions. Progressives want to use those democratic institutions to achieve change. Trump does not. Trump doesn't care about any of our institutions. He hates our institutions. And, of course, there are Democrats out there that are like, but don't worry, we'll work with Trump. You have Democrats out there, like Joe Manchin, uh, and, and uh, Joe, okay, the guy in Alabama, uh, I can't think of his name right now uh, for some reason. But they vote with Trump 60% of the time. 
hey, we got to build bridges, right? No, Trump's an authoritarian. You call yourself resistance? That's not a resistance. But anyway, now, getting back to what they were saying. Moderates, by contrast, are assumed to defend liberal democracy, its principles, and institutions. However, the numbers indicate that this is not the case. As Western democracies descend into dysfunction, which we are there, no group is immune to the allure of authoritarianism. Least of all, centrists, who seem to prefer strong and efficient government over messy democratic politics. Strong men in the developing world have historically found support in the center, from Brazil to in Argentina to Singapore and Indonesia. Middle-class moderates have encouraged authoritarian transitions in order to bring stability and to deliver growth. He then asks, could the same thing happen in mature democracies like Britain, France, and the United States? And that is a, that is a scary question to ask. So, look, this whole thing tells me a couple of things. That middle-class moderate voters are essentially clueless. They're okay with supporting authoritarianism. Why? Well, because at least it'll get things working again. But you're not the ones that are suffering. You may think that you're suffering, but in reality, you have the poor that are getting fucking crushed. And yes, you have people in the middle class that have gotten crushed so far that they'll end up being poor. But again, they think, well, if we just have this strong man, then he'll fix everything. And that, of course, explains why the white suburbs voted for Donald Trump. These white Republican voters that think that they're moderate, right? Oh, oh I'm a moderate Republican. Sure. But look, um, again, this is why you have centrists clamoring to work with Trump on issues. That's why they say, well, you got to compromise with the right. A good example of this is, of course, Obamacare, right? Centrists would rather reach out to Republicans to try to craft policy who are authoritarians, who have no interest in helping people. Republicans are essentially the arm of the uh, business class. Their only purpose is to get tax cuts for the rich, to funnel money for corporations. Um, they would, the centrists would rather work with them than actually do progressive policy. And that's why, of course, they'd other, uh, also rig primaries. Now, if you do that, if you rig a primary and make sure that a centrist wins instead of uh, a progressive Democrat that could actually win a general election, well, that helps the authoritarian get into power. That helps the right-winger get into power. That's what happened with Trump. They would rather have Republicans win than a progressive. That's why I think the establishment and the centrists are so dangerous. It's through their election rigging and their control of the media that we have Donald Trump. It's also why, being while being the wealthiest country in the world, that we don't have basic things like healthcare and education for our citizens. And it's also why places like Flint don't have any water. Why? Because, again, centrists won't allow progressives to actually win in these areas. And progressives can actually beat right-wingers in a lot of elections and actually get control back under centrist democratic rule the democrats have lost over a thousand seats michigan i live here i've seen this state turn from blue to red and it's gross and this capitulation to the right this always trying to get approval from the right wing the democrats are doing that is what's that is why we don't have clean water. That's why we don't have progressive policy. It's why we have such a messed up country. Now, this sh study shows exactly why we need to get away from the idea that centrism is good and actually legislate on facts. Because facts don't lie in the center. Facts are facts. There is no middle ground here. There's no middle ground. And finally, there is no compromising with authoritarians, racists, and Nazis. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. 
If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.